Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody slip slide away yesterday afternoon. It was pretty. It was sloppy and wet. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad to see it gone. <laughs> so, well, from my living room, it looked pretty. You did the right thing. You stayed in. So. Yeah. Anyway. Today, there's you guys hear me okay? This is Matt. Yeah, yep. Matt, we got you. Good. All right. Thanks for joining to, us. No problem. I'm in my car for a little bit, so unfortunately, I'm going to keep the video off. Okay. You wouldn't be the first person to do a Zoom call from your car with a video. <laughs> I gotcha. Several of us, several of us have done that. <laughs> so. It's like the only person we're missing is Nancy. There she is. Yeah, there you are. I didn't see you, but you're way off on my screen. You're way over in a corner. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Just, you put me in the corner, Tad. Uh -oh. I did. You know, Anne Marie controls this. I don't. So. I don't. I had nothing to do with it. It's all chance. <laughs> so we're all copying out on that one, Nancy. Sorry about that. You look like you were having fun shoveling snow yesterday afternoon when I drove past your house. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to melt, but you know, I rarely get a chance to, so I was out there. <laughs> You're kind of like the pandas having fun in the snow. Did you see that piece this morning? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was very cute. Okay, well, it looks like we're all here. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So it is February 1st. Happy February, everybody. And uh, it is 8.30. And we're here for uh, another meeting of the Downtown Business District uh, Parking Committee. And the first item on the agenda is the approval of, me, of the meeting minutes. I want to thank Janine for doing an excellent job of doing them. I Hopefully you all received them over the weekend and had a chance to look them over. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections that anyone has to make to them? If not, how about a motion to approve them? I move to approve them. Thanks, Nancy. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks, Matt. All in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, then moving on to the discussion of the draft report. Uh, I got that out finally to you all on Saturday morning. Hopefully you all had a chance to review it. Um, and uh, really, I'd just like to discuss uh, your thoughts on it. Uh, you know, did we cover it? Did I cover everything uh, in, uh, in summarizing this that we talked about? And, uh, and then we need to discuss the recommendations. So. The floor is open to anybody who would like to comment. Um, I had a series of just, uh, you know, typographical uh, edits. Okay. Um, you want to send those to me? We'll get them corrected. Okay. If they're just typographical, they're not substantive. No. That's okay, great. Exactly. Yeah. I anybody? guess the, the only other area I had a question on was. Um, uh, we talk about the valet and jitney service as uh, would be better defined uh, in the future. Uh -huh. um, are, you know, I'm just wondering if we shouldn't be actually recommending that you know a year from now or so. Or, I'm wondering if it should be a more specific recommendation of returning to it, since uh, okay. as I read this, I think we're disbanding at the end of this. Is is that correct? Well, we might come back and re uh, and re reconvene again, uh, okay. depending upon what comes out of this. I think that's entirely possible. I think this has been a pretty productive uh, group here, uh, and I think we've come up with some recommendations that would make a huge difference, assuming that they're implemented uh, mm -hmm. in people's ability to. Uh, for us to provide uh, additional parking and for people to find it. Yes. Uh, so uh, we could certainly add a recommendation to uh, revisit that in the future. I have no problem with that. I don't know what others on the committee think whether- Yeah, I don't know. Anybody else want to comment on that? I was going to suggest too that if in the interim, if 
if council is approached by someone with a viable jitney or valet service that we should consider so maybe that, that if that language is maybe put in there that if prior to season uh, you know uh, there is an option for valet that, that's something sh that simply should be considered okay so maybe the way to phrase that would be sh um you know, recognizing that a, a jitney and a val and or a valet service would be an independent contractor, uh, should someone should some enterprising person approach us, the city, uh, that we would give serious consideration to offering such. Would that be comfortable for you, Andrew, and the rest of you? For me, it would. I, I mean, yeah, sounds good to me too. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We can add that. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? Jeff, you're very quiet there this morning. Sounds all good to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, I well, sent you some comments yesterday. Okay. I didn't get those. Oh, I'll, I'll check. I'll, I'll make sure that you get them. I just okay. saw some, um, there were some discrepancies in the parking space numbers and okay. one of the I think the Smith Avenue George and Lynch cost was off by a little bit. So I just okay. revise those. Okay, I'll look for that, Charlie. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Carolyn, you have any comments? You're you're muted, Carolyn. Carolyn, you're muted. <laughs> you gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> I see I do it down here. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, after we got off our last meeting, I, um, I was curious to look up information on Lewis and I found a very good website. Um, at the top, it had home, it had tour of the town, it had accommodations, it had restaurant and shopping, it had events and activities. Um, and then it had it listed transportation, ferry, trolley, dart, had calendar events at, at you know uh, mentioned of course a, a little bit old made Lewis lights and um, it was something about info um, at lewis.com but it had a man named Frank do you know anything about that I do not but it was a very good website um, I mean I you know I clicked on all the things that they had and they really told a lot about the that about Lewis and um, I couldn't look because uh, I don't have anything on my phone, but I mean, um, I thought it was good. So maybe we need to find out about that and, uh, you know, find out if if we want to add something about the parking in, in that. Okay, good idea. Betsy, do you know this uh, person or? I, I don't know who bought that website. It was for sale a few years ago. Yeah, okay. But it was pretty much up to date. I mean, you know, we would say in that it was, uh, you know, because you mentioned, you know, just this past Lewis lights and everything. So, yeah, it was, um, and it was and easy. To, pretty much out of date. So go ahead. Yeah. Uh, um, well, yeah, but um, I thought it was pretty good. If you want me to send it to you, Betsy, do you want me to, if I no, find no, it? I'm familiar with it. Um, they, okay. they get a lot of the information off of our website. Okay. But I just thought we were talking about if somebody, you know, was coming here to look up information a little bit about it where things were it was you know it, it told a lot and it, it had your restaurants on it matt <laughs> hey, Car carolyn what was the website address um I, well i just went on lewis and um i don't know if it was that lewis.com it, it is lewis.com okay. okay okay and it, you know as i said i thought it was pretty good good well that's good to know i'll take a look at it myself I know Betsy, you've already begun work on a site yeah, of the chamber. We already site. had it. Um, the the map we we did it a I guess last year um, a map that we actually uh, developed that has shows where the parking is. It's on the it's on our the printed map that we do, but we also put it on the website and it's on the front page of the website. And we're in the process of trying to add it to the drop down list so that when you have visit to Lewis it's one of the things that drops down parking. Um, it's already on the website. It just doesn't have a drop down, a link to the drop down list. We're also, we have 
um, staff working on developing a section of our website for parking, and it'll include an interactive map. Um, so I, I had suggested that we get it built and wait to roll it out until we do something like Nancy had talked before about, you know, if we have the free lots and the, you know, kind of roll things out together, then it, it has a bigger impact. So I, I had said, let's get it built and then keep it on hold until we're ready to roll it out. That's good. Thank you. Um, uh, Carolyn, was it info at Lewis? Uh, what, what was the what was the site again? Or, or Betsy, do you know? It's what just Lewis.com. It Lewis.com. So it's just okay because there's a question in the chat from Sumner Crosby about it, and I just wanted to answer him. So, well, I, and then I think it's the one thing I I just copied down. Um, it mentioned this name Frank, which obviously Betsy's uh, familiar with, and then I think it said uh, info at Lewis.com. Okay. All right. Any other comments? I just had a question. Do we have, um, and as I was going through, I, I have to say in part, I wasn't sure what we should count. I was trying to, to uh, as I read through the recommendations, uh, to count up the actual number, the, the net gain in parking spaces that we think we'll be getting out of everything we're doing. And I know it's a little hard because some of it is with the striping, we're identifying spaces that aren't being used, but in a sense, we're, all, we're always there. Yeah, it's hard to, Charlie might want to comment on the net gain, uh, but so many, like the M&T lot is the biggest net gain in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, and, and that's only six spaces for the principal of the day. And then it's 24, uh, you know, when the bank is not open. But beyond that, um, all those other spaces pretty much existed except for being redefined. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we have to be careful that we don't say that we're adding parking, we're, we're defining parking and, and it's all non-metered parking. Yeah. yeah. I, I get what you're saying. And that would be a good thing to, you know, that we have put in, uh, in, a, in a rollout like Amory and Betsy were talking about mm -hmm. that we, you know, we've now delineated uh, Ever, you know, actually gone through and delineated X number of spaces uh, that were not previously well known or uh, uh, had been are, del are delineated. So, though it is a net gain at M and T, isn't it? In terms of in terms of spaces available to the public. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's only six though during the regular business yeah. hours. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And even it's actually eleven, mayor. It's actually eleven. Is it eleven? Okay. Yeah. 11, that includes one ADA space. So, the, and then, okay. then you have the 10 and, hour. 10 and, one. Okay. and then the other, the space count that we're delineating at the other three locations along third and park and Smith and Schley, it's 99, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, and then Otis Smith, I mean, by doing that, there's, there's some gain. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, currently it's really haphazard, so there's really no definition. Um, but I think creating... you, you uh, point out that they're defined and delineated. That I mean, a hundred is a is a pretty good number. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had two um, comments. That one we discussed previously, and one kind of was a late. Um, topic that was raised about the M and T lot. Um, so the first would be the, around the lighting and whether there is indeed sufficient. And maybe um, Reverend Ross could could comment on that. Um, I'm not, sir. I think there's sufficient lighting. It's not bright, but do we want it bright? So I, I'm not sure that that's been solved. And then the other was the late issue that was raised was the idea of potentially locating some bike racks either in that lot or the existing public lot, um, also on the same side of the M&T lot. Um, it was raised in the bike and ped committee. And the point there being that um, you could potentially fit up to 10 bikes in a spot intended for one car. So are, is that potentially a better use of space in terms of uh, you know, accommodating more individuals? Uh, I just wanted to bring yeah, that up. 
we added that the the bike rack thing to the discussion here this morning. It was okay. on the revised agenda. Yep. But yeah, thank you for bringing that up. The lighting thing, uh, I think there's quite a bit of lighting on the street around there. But uh, uh, Jeff, you want to comment? Yeah, I would say the same. I mean, I uh, I think the lighting is is good on all four sides of the block. So. We're doing uh, projects right now to improve the lighting on St. Peter's Square because a lot of people cut through going one way to the next and there will be some new pathways added. But um, uh, I think the lights, um, the only time I've noticed it's not been good has been when a light's been burned out and I call Anne Marie and she gets them to, you know, change right away, so. Good, thank you. Okay, so it looks like we've got some some revisions to this report, which I'll if you'll, everybody will send in uh, or email me or whatever revisions you have. We'll try to incorporate them this morning and still get this back out to you and also share it with members of council um, later today, unless there's further discussion. So let's talk about the bike rack. Charlie looked at it. Uh, uh, can you, uh, Anne Marie? Can Charlie pull up what he did? Yes, now he can. This was, uh, as Andrew said, came out of the bike ped and uh, we asked Charlie to take a look at it. He did not look at it from the standpoint of pulling out a space, but this is what he came up with. I did not look at it from, from pulling out a space. I mean, obviously if we did that, we'd be able to add more racks. By the way, we, we looked at putting the hoop rack like is down at the uh, pump station number four um, site for, for bike parking. So without really taking away a spot, and I was also thinking in terms of safety because I was looking up in here, I, but I didn't want bikes to be parking up here while cars were coming in. The only place I could come up with initially was down in here which would look, you know, something like that up here in the right hand corner where my cursor is and provide two hoops, four bikes. Mayor, I got to thinking about it over the weekend. I th thought maybe this area up here in this landscape bed along Market Street could be, you know, could serve the purpose of some bike racks as well. Um, That's a possibility. So I, um, can you see that? Yeah. Google right. Earth. Can you see that Google Earth? No, we're just still looking. Yeah, okay, we're still seeing the the CAD drawing. Hold on a minute. Let me um. Let me see if I can share Google Earth. Can you see it now? No. Nope. Yeah. Why don't you stop your screen share and then Try restart again. it? See if that works. We got to get with Zoom. We got to be able to move back and forth. <laughs> or we all need two computer screens. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, there you got it. Okay. Okay. So, you know, the, the lands, existing landscape area I have the bike rack shown now or da is down here at the corner. And mm. I, I, I didn't realize when I started thinking about it, but I do real do remember this that it looks like you know Lewis and Bloom or someone takes some care to make this landscape area look good. So, mm -hmm. and even this one down at the corner. So, any any of that area that we use for bike racks, you eliminate that landscaping. So, just so you know, Andrew, it's I didn't I didn't look at the existing city parking lot. I'll have to do that. It looks like if you use the, the area we're looking at now, the, the one that's closer to the dumpster, that you would be able to get almost twice as many. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, maybe maybe four. I have to look at that, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe four or even five. Um, but that I think that probably, without tampering with the spaces, uh, is a very good idea, Charlie. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't think about that last week. I, yeah, I didn't either. Yeah. Right. And one of the things about embedding it into one of these lots very deeply is that, 
I think we all know that bikers are like vehicle drivers. They want to park where it's very visible, where they could, they're close to the business. So if we embed the, the parking fairly deep into the parking lot, it's not going to be as attractive or as, uh, as noticed as if it's right where you're talking about either, either location. Right across from the bus stop too. So if people yeah, are coming into town with their bikes on the bus, then they can see the parking for them right across the way. Okay, any changes like this that we make uh, or recommendations that we make like this will need to go to m and for approval. They have uh, basically agreed with the concept plan that Charlie had developed. If we want to add this, then we will need to go back through uh, m and for them to sign off on it. Uh, I do know that they've been very concerned in the discussions we've had with them, Charlie and I and Anne-Marie, about making sure that they don't lose the big hollies. Uh, they are sensitive to landscaping, so. Would this be part of the city's cost responsibility, Mayor? I think it probably would be. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it would well, be, <laughs> I have so, no doubt. So that raises the other thing that was brought up in Bike and Pet of whether the the proposal of putting the racks at the Schley lot is really wise um, from what we just mentioned in terms of if people are coming in to come to Lewis and shop and eat, they're not likely to leave their bike at Schley. So I think that was the point of it's good. Schley was perceived as a good idea as a trailhead for bikers, but the reality of them coming and actually leaving their bike at Schley, I, I think the bike and ped committee and, and in general, I think it's seen as not realistic, I guess, is the, if they're not even using the one by dogfish, for example. Well, the one by dogfish has never had uh, much in the way of, of, of anybody identifying it uh, in terms of uh, you know, any signage other than it's there. And it's, you know, obviously you shouldn't need much signage, but it's not, there's no signage that would indicate it's there. Well, and, and, and because it, it seems to keep getting caught up in being a construction you know, hopefully we're done with that. that. Uh, right. <laughs> but know. I think that that affects it because when you see a bunch of um, absolutely construction vehicles, you don't necessarily feel like this is a nice safe place to put my bike where it's not going to get destroyed. Right. Well, the other thing is that, you know, we have that uh, Eagle Scout kiosk there. Now, uh, if we start putting some informational uh, materials in that kiosk, I think it will also cause people to want to stop there. Uh, whether they're on foot or in a bike or on a bike. I always thought, I always thought it was going to be a good location because it seemed to be a, an intersection of bikes coming off the trail on Gill's Neck Road, which we know there are plenty of them, bikes coming up Savannah Road from the beach side, and then those, all those people wanting to just stop, get some lunch or something downtown. But yes. yeah, for all those other reasons, it hasn't taken off. Well, we also, uh, the uh, Earl Webb, who owns the property next door, has also done a very attractive job of landscaping his canal frontage. Uh, and if we can, you know, quit using it as, a, as an area for construction and the lot next door looks so much more attractive, I think people will notice it more. And if we get some signage, so another option. So uh, thoughts on this. I. I, I like the idea of maybe looking at this uh, planting area as a possible area. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I like that. Now, my question is, would you still put a bike rack at that corner or would you keep them right there at that in the little landscaping area? I think I'd go with the one in, in the landscaping area. Yeah, and forget about the corner. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, if you're only gaining two hoops, you know, four bikes, yeah. are, you know, not much. Yeah, other comments? I like the idea. I think, I mean, I, I, I would assume that M&T would be agreeable as long as we don't make it look really ugly. You know, the, I mean, you could still landscape around it and right. do some nice things, so. Well, I think what was done with the bike rack over in front of the Swanadale Museum uh, sort of is a good illustration of how it can be incorporated and not be disruptive. Mm -hmm. So that would be my thought. I just have a question. I love this idea of putting the racks there. Is there a comprehensive map um, sort of piggybacking off of the need to 
clearly identify vehicular parking, do we have a map that outlines all of the available bike parking or uh, bike stands in the town? I don't know. I see. The, the bicycle I don't know. pedestrian advisory committee puts that map out, but I don't know that it has rack locations. And, and, then the, and then the other question for the team here, if we think it's a good idea to communicate all the available um, bike parking or uh, places to put your bike, should that not be part of any efforts that we do to get out the the word about parking so that perhaps Absolutely. we can shift people to bikes versus cars? Not shift, but encourage or support. Provide an alternative. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. No, we, Derek, we do have that on, um, and it's pretty comprehensive, the map that we produce, the historic Lewis map that's in all the boxes downtown, has a map and it has all the bike, it's got a, uh, uh, the icon with the bike. It is that map available, uh, Betsy, digitally or just um, paper? Uh, it's, it's, it's all over the place in paper. Um, we don't have this map on the on the website, but we can add it to the website. Betsy, would that bike, um, would that map be on the, the at the bike trail where they have the everywhere. big everywhere? It's at all the trailheads. It's at the um, the ferry terminal. It's at hotels from Fenwick Island up to Lewis. We print sixty thousand of these a year. Right. Thank it's you. Also, it's also in a little. Uh, uh, Lucide or plexiglass box attached to every bike rack yep. uh, downtown. So there's one at uh, Mary Vessels Park and there's one in front of uh, Half Full and uh, there's one over at, uh, at the across from the dogfish. So. Yeah, we're also installing a, um, uh, a brochure box at the trailhead uh, by the library. There isn't one there now but um, the city's actually going to install it um, uh, outside the bathrooms. And Gavin's going to fill it with maps year round. Right. Yeah, Sumner was just making a comment in the chat that there are so many people that live uh, within uh, off of Route 1 that that could, getting this word out about bike uh, parking would be, could encourage people to come in instead of driving cars. Absolutely. Does the Rotary uh, Trail Guide map, does that show uh, uh, bicycle parking? We're getting ready to reprint it for this season. We can certainly talk to them about it. I don't think it does currently. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I didn't think it did, but that it would be great if they would start doing it. Yep. I'm sure that uh, uh, Dennis Forney, uh, who really the one who organizes that uh, would be very agreeable to that. He's a biker himself, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, any other thoughts on uh, the possibility of locating parking right there? I think it's, it's certainly visible. Uh, I like the idea. Um, yeah, Charlie, it was a good one, thank you. Uh, um, Mayor, I would also, go ahead, Charlie. No, 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 go ahead, Andrew. Well, I was just going to say, I would encourage everyone to continue to look for spots in downtown that might make sense to, to put a bike rack. I mean, I think um, the idea that you can, like Sumner introduced, it's, it's, it's a very bikeable distance for mm -hmm. folks uh, that are even, you know, off the gill's neck that can come in off the trail and it's quick, probably quicker to get there by bike nowadays than by car. At certain times, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't have any scientific data, just anecdotal, but I am in the shops usually five days a week. And I can tell you, I see more bike activity um, in town, which is great. That's good. Well, we, the idea of adding bike racks would be great because uh, the idea, because it, it, it would alleviate some of the pressure that we see at Mary Vessels Park. That bike area is frequently overrun with bikes and people are blocking the sidewalk with, with their bikes, especially if they're uh, tandem bikes or uh, if they've got a, a baby carriage on the back or something like that, then they're sticking not, out across the sidewalk. Not to mention all of the street trees and, and um, signposts. Hmm. Anything that's vertical is, is fair game as a bike diet. 
Mayor, one last thing on this. I'll, I'll draw this up over here and see how many I can fit. But in your report, I think maybe we ought to add, you have a range of 16 to 27,000. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would maybe make it 17 to 28 to cover okay. the additional racks. Okay, great. Okay. All right, that's good. All right, any other comments on that? Charlie, if you'll get that uh, revised uh, and send it to me, I'll forward it on to M&T for them to review and comment on. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Because obviously it, it's a revision. Uh, they've been looking at it through their real estate department uh, very carefully and they've agreed to what we have proposed, the revision that we made earlier. So this is a, a further modification. I don't think it's a big hiccup, but we still need their concurrence since it's their property. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other uh, comments? Matt, you got out of your truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, other comments? Mayor, uh, you know, I live in Rehoboth, so I've been looking at these merge signs in Rehoboth. Mm -hmm. And they're all over the place now. I, I think they keep adding them. Betsy, you probably have seen quite a bit of them on your walks and stuff, but you know, what we've been looking at in Lewis is merge signs on posts that are decorative, let's say, but I, I see the merge signs on just like regular sign posts stuck on sides of other things <laughs> like um, utility poles, but they're the, you know, they're the decorative color, colored merge sign. I just, wanted to throw that out there because that's the that's the path that Rehoboth has taken but I you know I just want you know just wanted to let everybody know what what we're observing down here okay thanks I I, I'm just, I thank you all for attending the other evening those of you who did uh, the one thing we still need is by phasing it what does it what does it cost I mean we're still looking at nearly three hundred thousand dollars according to what John presented the other evening, but he hadn't broken it into phases. And I think he indicated that he would get that information to Anne-Marie sometime early this week. So once we have that, uh, that will help council understand what the impact could be. Because I think as he mentioned, a phase one in his thought process would be uh, the pedestrian and, by, and parking uh, right. and then work out from the a core. Uh, and, that's really the, the area that we seem to be, uh, that this committee has focused on is how do we get people moved around once they're here, so. It's an interesting comment though, Charlie, because um, I guess I was assuming or hoping that with merge, uh, we'd also be getting rid of some signs, that these would be signs that would be replacing existing signs. Mm -hmm. Not that we'd just have a new set of, uh, of you know, parking signs that look consistent while we leave all the old ones up that are all totally different. And I don't know whether there's been any, I don't know whether budgeting is required to, uh, to remove other signs. So I think with, um, with the, the plan that Merge puts forward, it would include the removal okay. of signs. I, I guess the question is with phasing, obviously not every sign would go away initially as we try to roll out parking. So it would probably be replacing parking mm -hmm. signs, but you know, some of the things um, that point to destinations would remain. So there would probably still be some clutter, um, mm -hmm. but not as, not as bad. <laughs> yeah, I guess it didn't dawn on me until I really started looking at all these signs down here in Rehoboth that part of what, at least in my mind, part of that merge proposal was in a sense, beautification of the signage as well as making them more standard. But the way they have them down here, like you said, Nancy, they're sort of, they're nice signs, but they're still cluttery and they're still, they're, you know, the posts are just regular street posts in a lot of cases. and. There's a lot of that anyway. So it's mm -hmm. just something that we need to consider going forward. Okay. 
Derek, you've been very quiet this morning. <laughs> I, was just, I was actually just going to say something, so that's funny. <laughs> um, what I, I've been thinking a lot about is, and we've talked about it as a team before, is mar marketing or communication, not only about all of these um, improvements that we were putting forward, but I think in general, it, the topic just seems to come up over and over um, uh, about where you can park, where you can go. And I worry that we're gonna have all these good works get approved, which as we know, have a price tag to them. You know, the signage, especially, I was myself surprised about how costly that is. And I would hate for all this effort to go into it and, we, and it doesn't, uh, the word isn't out and it doesn't, funnel people to where we want them to go. I'm not sure how to solve the issue. Um, as I've said before, I'm willing to volunteer my time, um, but I, that's on my mind. Um, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. why I've been quiet. Yeah, I think Betsy uh, is already working on something. It sounds like Anne Marie's working on a plan for the city's website. Uh, between the chamber and the city's websites, if we have information like that, certainly uh, whatever gets approved and we get ready to and we get it rolled out, uh, we'll do a major story with the Cape Gazette and other publications uh, to try and inform the public. But uh, an ongoing basis, as we know, those whatever social media or whatever things that we end up using has to be updated uh, so that it remains current. Yeah, that's my worry. It's not the initial Cape Gazette. I mean, the Cape Gazette readers are local. Mm -hmm. um, that'll get out once in a point in time. It's the uh, digital ability to, to have information pushed out to people in a proactive way um, over time in a consistent manner. That's the part that I worry about. But again, I don't. I wish I had some big solution to this. Um, I think it's going to be a combination of solutions there. I think you're hitting it. So, social media, I think word of mouth. I think the other, the, if we can, uh, I assume Betsy, you're planning to use the ambassadors downtown again this year. And I think the bike and ped committee is going to put together a biking ambassadors mm -hmm. program. And like you said, with uh, social media, we uh, enhanced websites, things like that. I think it's, it's going to take a multi-pronged approach in my mind. Andrew. I agree with you. Andrew, do I recall from the merge presentation the other night, there was some discussion of just, just what Derek was talking about, pushing information out. I think it was about number of spaces left at say the 1812 parking lot. But I can't remember the mechanics of that really. Yeah, there, there, is, a, there is a technological capability to do that, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure how it would, would work. It involved uh, like beacons on this, the different stations. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, Back in my days when I worked on Smarter Cities at IBM, um, it, it, there's the technology is all there. It's expensive though for yeah. some, for some what for a, you know a town as small as as, mm -hmm. as we are, so, yeah. it, because it's not just the initial cost. The upkeep right. is also right. expensive. Exactly. Okay. I mean, we see that even with um, e even with the the meters that we've installed you know, I guess two years ago, J just the, the cost of it is, is it's a more expensive program because there's the software and the um, handheld units that the enforcement guys need to carry. And, and you know, I mean, uh, technology is wonderful, it, um, but there, you're right, there's a cost. So we, it, it's a matter of determining what, what we're willing to, to pay. Right. All right, well, I think uh, getting a number from Merge in terms of what they're, and remember what they're gonna provide is an estimate. They have great right. knowledge of what an estimate, what a price point should be, but we still have to put it out to bid and right. who, knows, <laughs> who knows where the bid will come in. Right, uh, and, and I thought he said he'd have that to me today. I think he did, yeah. So as soon as we get it, we'll share it with uh, everyone here on the committee so that you have some idea of what uh, the initial thought process is and what the cost would be. But, and then Anne-Marie will reflect it in the budget. 
as we get into the budget <laughs> discussion. <laughs> Do you have well, money that, in this year's budget? For, and was there money in this year's budget that's going to be the, the budget year that's going to be ending in a couple of months? Is there any money in this year's budget in case we could get going so it could be implemented for this uh, meter season? Um, so the, the money that's in this year's budget is for the work that's going on now. I think that even from a practical standpoint, if we get a cost estimate, and put it out to bid, it's not, we wouldn't incur any costs before April 1 anyway, e even, even if we signed a contract, because you figure right now it's the beginning of, of February. If we put it out to bid, we're not gonna have bids till, till March. Um, so I, I think it's definitely a next year item um, with the, at the risk of Ellen Lorraine running into my office and yelling at me, the, the portion of our revenues that are the most healthy um, is, is the, the capital side of things. So, um, you know, the, the funding for implementation of, of the signage, I feel more confident in than some of the other things that aren't capital. Hmm. Anything else to bring forward here this morning? Well, I just, Mayor, I just wanted to, um, we, we had talked before about the Little League field and the use there, and then um, the mayor and I had an opportunity to meet with, I saw, I see that Rob is on the on the call right. today. And really, I think what we discussed is, is not really a change in terms of what's being practiced now. Um, I think um, the three of us discussed the fact that the public has been parking there, and from, from Rob's experience, it's largely... Um, Lo more local um, that park there. And he, I think, uh, Rob, feel, feel free to raise your hand and join if, if what I'm saying is not correct. But I think it, the, the sense is that it's fine to continue that practice um, so long as it doesn't interfere with Little League. And um, the there may be some improvements that need there. We noticed that there, in the outfield, there are some fairly substantial uh, mud puddles. I mean, I guess you call them uh, depressions that then become mud puddles, but I think there's some fill uh, that could potentially be used there, and then I don't know, we're grading out stone, but just a general kind of freshening up. Um, and then, Mayor, did, we talked a little bit about the potential lining through the use of. It, were you saying like lot? Is it a lime that's yes. currently used there? Okay, that's what's so, used over at the yacht club and other locations. But the issue there would become it would have to be repeated probably over the course of the summer as the law, as the grass gets mowed and things like that. But it does provide some, to, some idea of reducing the haphazardness of the parking that goes on there. So Rob, you're all, if you want to make any additional comments, you can unmute yourself. Otherwise, if you feel I've represented our conversation, well, you can. In any event, I appreciate your, your, gen, your family's generosity and you joining today, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. It's obviously been a very popular lot for a lot of reasons. Certainly, when we have festivals and things like that, it's been well utilized for many, many years. But I think one of the concerns that you know we have is you know people parking along uh, in parallel with uh, uh, Pilot Town Road there, and how treacherous is that? We'd rather have them in the lot than just parking along the road because there's a, the road bends there and uh, it's hard to see. So anyway, so based on your discussions you know, as we talk about mapping and pushing out information, is it agreed that that's an, that's an area where we could put on a map free parking? I'm not sure that given the fact that there would be time constraints, because essentially literally goes till, you know, Jul beginning of July right. or such, that if we did that, it would, I think it would need to have that caveat. That You'd have to put some, some, some okay. description. Uh, you know, the same thing's true with the uh, with the BB lot. Uh, we have to put some descriptor in there that it's not used during the regular business hours, Monday through Friday. Right. So it would be uh, evening uh, evenings and weekends. Exactly. And maybe the descriptor for the uh, for the Little League lot is uh, post a Little League season uh, with an approximate end date, July 10th, July 15th, whatever, um, so that you have some idea. You know, so we don't interrupt the Little League, which was the intended use. 
the other thing that was mentioned, which there are some existing signs there, but obviously um, with kids hitting home runs, it, it's, it needs to be noted that uh, you could face car damage if you just choose to park in uh, left center field there. So we've got a hand up. Do you, Jim okay. B, do you want me to unmute? Sure. Go ahead, please. All right. You should be able to unmute. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. All right. It's uh, Jim Baker. I'm uh, part of the Lewis Little League. And uh, just uh, real quick, the haphazardness parking and the parallel parking, like I think people do that because there aren't enough uh, spots in that area. So they, they just try to choose as many areas that they can utilize. So if, if everything is striped out, which is great, I think it's great, you'll actually start, um, you'll actually lose spaces. Uh, you'll lose, I guess, volume. Uh, but you know, it'll be a safer lot. Okay. Um, uh, just because, like, I, I see the uh, the screen that uh, Charlie just brought up. So yep. the area to the far right, the driveway that wraps around towards uh, right field. Yep. Uh, people, everybody will park along the fence, and and you can barely get one car through that main driveway to access the Orton side of the property. Uh -huh. uh, when uh, eat, and that's even during the season with our patrons, um, and and then the times where we would have most usage for our patrons is uh, is evenings. Uh, every evenings from from around five o'clock to we'll play till. And I don't know what this season is going to be like, but it, we'll play till probably I would say eight thirty or nine even. And then also uh, on Saturdays. Um, starting at around nine in the morning until uh, till about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so that, that's the time frame that the Little League uses um, those spots. And then there's a couple areas just to take note um, where we have to access the fields for our field equipment. So there's gates there that sometimes people park in front of. So we, uh, if there are striping, we just want to make sure that those gates are blocked off on each field. Okay. And then the last thing, uh, during your special events, everybody moves the, uh, the bike racks that we have that block the, uh, the driveway that goes behind the concession stand. Uh, oh, really? They'll move, yep, oh yeah, they'll move them, yep, and park uh, back there. They'll park anywhere that they can find a spot. Mm. Um, so I don't know if there is a better way to, to handle and limit that traffic. We, we try to block off that traffic just because during events and games, there's kids running around. They're running around the concession stand. We don't want cars back there. Um, so that's the main reason. And then, and then also we have the facilities that are there that are right up against the, uh, the driveway there or the, uh, the uh, I guess, the stoned area. So I guess one, one question, Jim, would be if, if we do, you know, make this more of a, sanctioned satellite parking area or whatever we want to call it um would no parking signs no vehicles beyond this point you know that type of stuff coupled with having our parking enforcement staff monitor it would that be a benefit uh yeah i i think it would however i do think because people have been using it in conjunction with the time frame when our patrons use it. Um, I, I think we're going to have a hard time for some of our patrons to find some spots, uh, but maybe that's not true. Um, but, but that extra signage around like, um, you know, behind the, uh, I mean, and we have signs there, Emory, uh, okay. they just, and we even have blockades and they just physically move them. <laughs> right. To, but they haven't to, been getting get tickets. Spot. Now, yeah. They have not been getting tickets. That's we correct. find that tickets sometimes modify people's behavior. Oh, uh, for sure. And and for even sure. even out on Pilot Town Road, if we wanted to put no parking signs, you know, because that, you know, we have some already on no, no on Pilot Town Road. So, but but again, if you know, we we've talked about and and as we get into the budget, we're we've talked about adding some additional parking enforcement. So this could be an area that. That gets a little more enforcement than it has in the past. Right. Yep, and that's fine. And that area that is on the screen right now, the grass right up against Pilot Town, uh, people will park head on right, um, right off of Pilot 
down in the grass area. Right. Um, and and honestly, like during our during our events, like that's mostly our patrons too that do it. Right. And and, and I guess that's the that's the challenge. Um, we we don't want to make the the little league parents revolt. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And as, as you move further out, Pilot John Road, that hill uh, or that embankment becomes a lot more steep. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, yes. doesn't, uh, it also narrows to the point where it's really not practical to park there. About, that about where that first <laughs> sign is located, where it says no parking. That gets pretty steep there. So It does, but uh, they do stack up even up on that hill. Um, unfortunately. Okay. Charlie, if we could go back to uh, the outfield area, um, we could show, uh, we could talk about where we're seeing the ponding and things like that. Uh, keep, come around. Uh, there you are. Where that car, where those cars are parked uh, right there, that area is where we're seeing ponding. Uh, and that was an area that we talked with Mr. Orton about, uh, you know, doing some grading and doing some stone because there is uh, basically if you start on the right side with that white car all the way down uh, and around there's a they t that all turns to mud uh, and um, it's uh, it's you know and it's also a danger obviously because if the ball games are going on you could end up with a, bro a broken windshield pretty easily um, so that that's an area that is on the city's land that needs to be uh, needs some uh, stone or something to improve it uh, so it's it's usable. The other side that backs up to the tennis court was part of a tap project several years ago, and it drains very well because there's a slope to it. Any other comments on the Little League field? Okay. Jim, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Oh, sure. Thank you, guys. And thanks, uh, Mr. Orton, for joining us. We appreciate your ongoing willingness to allow this lot to be used. Uh, it does take it does take some of the pressure off of downtown. Thanks. All right. So, is there anything else that we need to bring forward here this morning? Uh, if not, uh, I, if you'd all send uh, whatever revisions you have uh, before noon today, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll update the report. Uh, and send it back out, uh, and we'll also release it to, uh, to, to members of council. That are, I think most of them, uh, with, with uh, well, Tim is certainly on this morning, uh, and Andrew's here, I think the only one missing um, are Rob and Bonnie. So anyway, uh, I wanna thank- who, who should we be sending edits to? Is it directly to you? I've, okay. got, I've, got, I've got the document, if you okay, would. thank please. you. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to say this was a good, a great committee to work with. Everyone brought ideas and um, part the, the participation was really uh, exceptional. So I, I enjoyed working with you all as a group. Yeah. I feel the same. I just think we've been really productive, thoughtful, always looking at things as a possibility and then backing off of them if it doesn't make sense. So sort of a glass half full kind of approach, which has been energizing. And I just appreciate everybody. Thank you. Same yeah. here, I'm really happy to see incremental parking spaces. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy <laughs> with the land we have here, so. No, but I think that we, we, we've identified, as, you know, over the two years that we most of us have worked together, we've identified a fair number of places where we can make a difference. Uh, and, and also uh, the need to get the, the public better informed. And I, and I thank everybody who worked on last year's committee and those of you who are new this year for all your efforts. It's really been a very productive meeting. And uh, I know uh, there, there are a lot of areas that there's still opportunity to improve. And we've, we've got a laundry list here for council to consider uh, as we go into the budget. But um, getting all of you to, get, to work together with us uh, has been really very helpful. Uh, and uh, it shows a, a real effort uh, to be aware of uh, everybody's needs uh, who is in, involved downtown. So thank you. And I, yes, um, in terms of timeline, um, does does there have to be a public workshop about this before uh, council actually votes on some of these recommendations? Um, didn't didn't we schedule a public workshop to talk about um, Third Street parking, 
uh, and then we had to cancel it because of a uh, snowstorm or, or we something. We had we had scheduled a public workshop to talk about making Third Street one way. Right. Okay. And um, I'm not sure for the parking it needs a workshop. Um, just at the um, next week's council meeting, the report and recommendations will be on the council meeting agenda. And then as we head into the budget, Ellen Lorraine and I have um, included the cost estimates that Charlie has provided into our um, budget discussion. So we'll, um, again, they're primarily capital. So we will be bringing those forward to council for prioritization and discussion. I think the other workshop we had was when we talked about metering the spaces along King's Highway. And we're not talking about increasing any metered spaces on the streets here. So it's all more delineation of spaces rather than uh, a, you know, any kind of change like that. So, okay, great. All right, thank you all for joining us this morning and thank you for your hard work on this committee. I appreciate it. I think we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Yeah, let's have a good day. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah. Charlie, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.